Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and ohio, everybody. What is going on? It is Gail right here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Danmachi Memoria Freeze video. And today we're taking a look at the interview with Amori Sensei and the Danmimo development team. More specifically, part one of the interview with Amori Sensei and the Danmimo development team. It seems like there is going to be a part two to this interview, but this came out of nowhere. We didn't exactly know when this interview was going to be coming out. We actually knew about the interview because they announced it during the anniversary live stream saying it would come out at the end of June, but we didn't get an exact date or anything of that sort. So this came out of nowhere this morning. I was kind of expecting it to be sometime during the weekdays next week, but it just came out of nowhere. So we're going to be covering it on the channel right here, right now. And of course, we're going to be talking about everything that was discussed during this interview. Whenever part two releases, I will be making a separate video for that as well. But yeah, I'm very excited to get into it. I'm very excited to see what has been discussed between Amori Sensei and the Don Mimo development team. Of course, they mentioned in the tweet right here that they're talking about some stories from the beginning of the development of Don Mimo. So let's talk about it and let's get into the interview itself. Now, of course, if you guys go on to enjoy this video please be sure to leave a like down below subscribe to the channel for more Don Machi and Don Machi Memorial Freeze content and let me know in the comment section down below what did you guys think of the interview did you guys like it dislike it what do you guys think was interesting do you guys feel like it was just a normal interview nothing too extravagant in terms of anything that was said let me know in the comment section down below but i will be leaving a link to it down below in the description so you guys can read it for yourselves and see what you guys think now remember that this is something that is translated it's not something that i have actively translated like it's google translate helping me out here for this video so of course if you have better translations maybe for the next video when part two comes out we can have a proper translation on screen and we can go over it together once more when part two dr does drop of course right so Danmimo's sixth anniversary interview. Why was the game Danmachi Memoria Freeze created? I always end up overdoing it. The crazy enthusiasm of Fujino Omori and the developers is dangerous. Okay, <laughs> that is one way to put it. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Let's let's take a look down and see what it says here. Um, this time as a commemorative interview, Mr. Fujino Omori, the original author of Is It Wrong to Try to Ask, uh, Try to Meet uh, Girls in a Dungeon or Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon. It's so weird, the translation. I hate Google Translate. For for this reason and mr nakano director of Pride flyer studios who's in charge of uh game production nozawa producer general director we asked mr nagano of the work boasts a high level of uh, perfection as an rpg okay this is very tricky to uh, understand but yeah um the okay so the work Okay, so this work, the specifically Dan Mimo, boasts a high level of perfection as an RPG for smartphones and enjoys the original story completely supervised by F Mr. Fujino Omori, which is true. So basically, they're saying that this is an RPG game for smartphones um, at a high level. And of course, the original story is completely supervised by Fujino Omori, of course. In interview part one, this is part one, uh, we look back on the six years of Dan Mimo in addition to behind the scenes stories that can only be revealed now. We also talk about the reasons why a large volume scenario completely supervised by the original author is implemented in this work. All right, let's take a look here. What I learned from uh, listening to the story was the crazy passion of Mr. Omori and the development staff who said, I always end up doing too much. Fans of Dan Mimo and Dan Machi should definitely enjoy it, which is true. I mean, hey, I, 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 this is something I've always felt is true is that the development team i know obviously amori sensei is going to be passionate about the work for dan mimo and he's going to obviously overdo it being the author of the series but the development team has always encouraged him and has always also tried to do the best they can in producing really good content for us the player base and fan base so i mean it is true it is true a dinner party with uh, mr amori changed history First of all, as a review of the past six years, I would like to ask you about the beginning of development. Amori Sensei, my first game adaptation was Danmachi, uh, Danmachi Cross Historia. Obviously, that was the first ever Danmachi Gacha game, funnily enough. Um, so it came as Cross Historia, Dan Mimo, Orario Repsodia, and then now we're getting, of course, uh, we're obviously going to be getting uh, Battle Chronicle and then the new Danmachi game next year, right? So those are the five games that are on mobile, of course. We obviously have Infinite Combat as well, but the less said about that, the better, to be honest. All right. Um, I understand that Danmimo started after that, but what about Wright Flyer Studios? 
Nozawa P says, although Cross Historia was in the works for Gree, it was actually a different movement. At the time, Right Flyer Studios was looking into various IPs to launch a new smartphone game project, and that's when I came across Danmachi. I felt that Danmachi is a perfect match for the smartphone game business in terms of its richness of stories and characters, so we asked if we could make a game by all means. I'm surprised it was that simple, to be honest, considering you know gree is the parent studio of right flyer studios right so it goes like uh so basically right flyer studios is a subsidiary of uh gree right i assumed it must have been like okay we need two games a browser game and a mobile game the browser game we're gonna launch immediately i think the browser game launched in what 2015 2016 something like that at the end of the year and then of course dan mimo came out in 2017 right so obviously the development for dan machi and memoria freeze probably would have taken more time but if it's as simple as oh Right Flyer Studios was also looking for a game, and we just asked, okay, can we do something on Danmachi? Ah, listen, I'm, I'm, that, that, that is one way to do it. You, you gotta shoot your shot. You gotta shoot your shot, you know? So let's take a look at what Omori Sensei has to say. So, how was Mr. Omori when you heard the story? How were you when you heard the story? Is basically what he's asking here. I was very happy with Cross the Story, so my expectations for Dan Mimo were quite high. In spite of that situation, the play video, so the. I assume the beta video that I was shown during the development at the beginning was extremely well done. The quality of the character movements and the production during the battle is too amazing. I didn't play many smartphone games at the time but my first impression was that I was impressed that I could make an RPG like this even from my point of view. I think the thing is right with this point uh, before we move on to Nagano and what he says. I think at the time in 2017 you have to remember that there weren't that many amazing titles that came out right i i mean th this was during the era of games like dokkan fire emblem heroes uh you know fgo and so on and so forth so in comparison to those i would say dan mimo has relatively good quality in the foundation levels of course right if you talk about game modes and everything else that came out since then you can make an argument and say they didn't really match up to the updates that some other games did but if you look at the quality of the game from scratch, right, the story, the voice acting, the uh, artworks and everything, they were very solid, I would say, right? They were very, very solid. So I definitely get this point and I, I understand that point for sure. Uh, let's take a look at Nagano. I'm ashamed to say that I haven't read Danmachi, but when I was looking for various IP works during the planning process, I came across Danmachi and started reading it and I was addicted. So this is, of course, him saying he didn't know about Danmachi beforehand, but now... Uh, when he was looking through various IP works for, you know, making a new game, he came across Danmachi and started reading it and then became addicted to it, which is, I mean, hey, as a Danmachi fan myself, I get that, to be honest. I absolutely get that. Um, anyways, I felt like it was a story with a lot of passion, so I felt a sense of mission that I had to create a game with that level of passion enjoyed many times over, basically. I can understand that as well. I, I can definitely understand that as well. And I feel like they are kind of accomplished that. I mean, if we see what we have gotten recently, right? With the likes of Argonaut, with the likes of Australia Record. I, I think we've gotten that times much, much more, you know? Obviously, it was with the help of Amori Sensei. But it has to be a collaborative effort. You can't just make stories on your own because sometimes you aren't able to sort of convey what the author was originally telling with certain characters. So having the supervision of Omori Sensei when it came to writing certain stories, I think was very, very important. And it actually helped make the stories good in all honesty. So absolutely get that. The video I showed Amori Sensei was also a video that I worked hard to recreate in the game, so I was really happy that it was appreciated. I wonder if it might have been one of the early scenes in the game. Probably, I would assume it might have been like maybe Bell versus the Minotaur originally. Potentially, I would assume it might have been Bell versus the Minotaur. Most likely, I would assume that would be the case. Um, by the way, what was your impression when you first met the development staff and Amori Sensei? So, how did you? feel about each other when you first uh, met uh, up basically so nagano says mr amori is a very friendly person this dinner party was the catalyst for my involvement in dan mimo amori sensei also goes on to add uh, just looking at the screens during development made me feel that it would be an interesting game so i wanted to talk about the various things while eating yakiniku uh, rather than just having meetings <laughs> fair enough they had yakiniku at the <laughs> while talking about dan mimo fair enough <laughs> What did you talk about at the Yakiniku table? Uh, Nagano says, At the time, we were already fans of Danmachi, so I remember talking to Amori Sensei about how wonderful Danmachi was and whether it was a hot, to hot topic. Amori Sensei goes on to add, I could feel the heat. Everyone's enthusiasm is really amazing and it was the first time for people to talk so crazy and passionately. 
Nozawa says, I understood that you were busy, so I thought it would be rude for us to approach you. At the time, uh, he invited us to dinner, so we thought I can't let this op opportunity pass. The distance between Omori Sensei and the production team has become closer after the dinner party. Omori Sensei adds, That's right, not only did we talk about Danmachi and Danmimo, but we also talked about the games I knew and he broke down the walls. Okay, so basically they were just generally... T I mean, this is, this is it. Again, this is the point I was trying to make a couple of uh, weeks ago. I think we were talking about uh, Omori Sensei and his connection with Danmimo. And I was saying this, like, it's very unlikely to see the same thing happening with Danmachi Battle Chronicle and the upcoming Danmachi game with Neo, Wiz and Greed because it's a completely different team. You have to build up those connections, that chemistry all over again. Whereas in this case, you know, they developed that connection even before the game came out. So there was always going to be that level of respect and level of understanding about what then what needs to be done with Don Mimo in terms of at least the story side of things, right? So I think this is great to hear and listen to or i should say read more so because it's just kind of confirming what i always thought uh to be the case is that you know omori sensei and the connection between him and the development team of don, don mimo is amazing it's exceptional um it's i think much better than some other games and their ip uh owners and their ip author leaders i suppose right i think this is way way better for sure right um even after the dinner party i received an email about the size of several pages of a novel i thought in a good way they were bad guys <laughs> No, no, I mean, that's fair. I mean, okay, listen, if you're getting an email sent to you filled with pages of text, it's like, brother, please, what, what is going on? I was inspired by the desire to convey the charm of the work through the game, putting all my effort into this game, and he also wanted me to help make Don Mimo an even better game. As a result, over the past six years, I've had many amazing experiences. I want to say to myself at the time, you did it, Fujino Omori. I, I think that's great. That is honestly great. Crazy versus Crazy, a hot production site that knows no limits. What kind of exchanges did you have with Omori Sensei in the early stages of development? That's how development started. I asked Omori to Sensei to supervise the story. The level of supervision by the original author for a game with an original work varies from person to person. And in a good way, there are people who say a game is a game, so I'll leave it to you. In the midst of this, nearly 90% of the text I gave Omori Sensei was rewritten and returned to me, and he seemed to be angry with me. I can say it now, but we were terrified saying the teacher is angry. I mean, yeah, because what you do is, what they do is, right, when it comes to the non-canon stories, right, like, for example, um, I'm going to pull up the summer of 2018, summer of 2018 story, right, uh, with Aina on the beach and obviously Summer Eyes and all that jazz. I assume what they must have done is they would write the story in the development team. There would be a person dedicated, a team dedicated to that, probably two or three people, I would assume at the very least. They write the story and then they send that draft over to Amori Sensei who goes through it and is like, okay, no, 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 yes, 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 send it back and that's what you should run with. I think that's a good thing and a bad thing as well for Amori Sensei particularly because that means he was so involved with Dan Mimo as well because he's basically going through an entire section of a story basically right he's going through entire sections of stories and also at the same time he's working on the main series and Sword Oratoria light novels as well along with episode Freya episode Ryu and all that jazz so he's going he's doing a lot in that in, in that situation right and it goes to show as to why recently as well and i guess also the reason why dan mimo is not gonna get many more stories if not any story from the sixth anniversary onwards right is because he's been so busy my man has been writing a light novel every single month for the past year now so you know it makes sense it makes sense as to why that was the case um nozawa goes on to add the misunderstanding was later cleared up but from omori sensei's point of view the rewrite was inevitable a normal game with an original work is often based on a reproduction of the original work and the parts that are not drawn in the original work are not touched on tacitly. That, that's not the case with Dan Mimo. I'm stepping into things that aren't written in the original. There are parts where characters who have never met in the original have a conversation, true, and there is also a communication element where Belle and the characters become friends. Omori Sensei goes on to add, you've created a matrix-like list of names of characters you've never met in the original work, and even a matrix of relationships. It makes me want to get closer. I don't call this character this way. Considering this distance between these two characters, it's correct to use this tone. So it was necessary to supervise and rewrite even the smallest details so that the story of Dan Mimo wouldn't be a lie. You know, I feel like this is this is this is how it should be done. When 
when you're using an IP and you're generating new original stories, this is how it should be done. But of course, it also depends on how willing the author is, how willing the development team is to listen to this sort of stuff. Again, I do, I do genuinely believe that Don Mimo, for the most part, has carried Don Machi as a franchise at certain points, especially when we didn't have an, any anime for a stretch of time. I think it was like two years. Stories like Argonauts, stories like, uh, you know, Astray Record, all of these things helped out so much, right? It helped out so much to, you know, get things rolling, get the, get the ball rolling, basically, for Don Machi to, you know, be a lot more popular, especially not only in Japan, but in the West as well. Um, Nagano goes on to add, from the beginning, we were talking about the m amount of material for Dan Mimo being too large, but for some reason, the number increased even more after we supervised it. Bitter smile here. Omori Sensei goes on to add, it's true that I was angry at the time, however, the vector of anger is different. I was surprised that there were so many characters that appeared, not the quality part, but when I clo looked closely, a certain character was not included. It was a mysterious anger that said, you should send Takemikazuchi and Mia, 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 yeah, Mia to the exchange. I was about to say, Mia. For a second, I thought it was going to say Mia, but it, she, he's talking about Mia Grand. I was like, it is, if it's crazy, please, it ke please keep it crazy until the end. To be fair, they did keep it very crazy until the end. I mean, some of the stories we should have, we got, I don't think we were ever supposed to get. Argonaut, Australia Record, um, all, all this stuff has been insane, you know, all this stuff has been insane. Um, Nagano goes on to add, because of this, we were even more blown away. In a good way, I've been making Dan Mimo while seriously colliding with Omori Sensei, and that's been around since the early development. I assume colliding is supposed to be collaborating with Omori Sensei. Listening to everyone's stories, Ryu-san's words, I always end up doing too much crossed my mind. Nagano said, uh, at the first anniversary event, Mr. Omori said, let's not be stingy. Looking back, I feel like I overdid it. I mean, Grand Day was a little crazy, to be fair. I remember Grand Day being absolutely insane, you know. It was very, very insane. Personally, I think that creations are meaningless unless they surpass what has already been published. So it's a state where I'm automatically getting more and more uh, strangling my neck. I know it's very inefficient in terms of production, but you went too far. So he's basically like, uh, he's just strangling his neck continuously to try and be better and better and surpass what he's been publishing. And of course, it's inefficient in terms of production because you're going to want to keep rewriting. You're going to want to keep one-upping. And it's at a point you kind of have to stop. Again, I think that's the biggest reason why we're not going to see any stories after the sixth anniversary because I think they've reached their peak, right? You could argue that they've reached their peak. You you could also make an argument and say that they could have reached their peak if they did Zeus and Hera or something like that. But considering all things said and done, they did. They did reach their peak a while back, right? Um, Nakano goes on to add, that's what you said and it left a strong impression on me. As for the team members, the original author, Sensei, is so motivated and he is involved in a style that doesn't hold back, so we can't help but do our best. The seriousness of Mr. Mori, uh, a supervising system with full power based on the setting of the unpublished original. One of the major characteristics of Don Mimo is that it brings out the charm of the characters, conversation on the home screen, communication elements. Okay, so now this is very interesting because we're getting into the gameplay elements of the game, not only just the story. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there were many combinations of characters that didn't talk in the anime or the original work, especially as of six years ago. Yeah, I mean, if you look back, I want to say during the first year of the game coming out, I think we were just about to get into Danmachi Volume 9 and 10 and stuff, as well as Sword Oratoria 5 and 6, I want to say. So it was still very early days, right? It was very, very early days of just the series itself, right? We're not obviously as deep in as we were, uh, as we are now back then. But yeah, I mean, a lot of characters never interacted at that point, especially in the anime. If you take a look at the anime, we, we, we were way behind. We were so far behind, right? So it made sense in that regards that they had to consider this point as well, right? Is some of these characters didn't talk to each other in the anime or in the light novel. Um, not only Dan Mimo was Dan Mimo the first collusion, but there was also times when we submitted a depiction of a normal conversation between characters that actually had a very important setting hidden between them. When the teacher saw it, he must have felt like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Speaking of now, it was revealed in the original work, but the scene where Freya and XX, the characters are omitted for the sake of spoilers. Uh, I, I, I can make a guess as to who it was. And other conversations were carefully developed after receiving information from Mori Sensei six years ago. 
I, uh, I so yeah, let's take a look at what Amori Sensei says here. When Freya and XX appeared in the same place on the home screen, Mr. Nagano voluntarily reported this is a bug. <laughs> I love how he's he's like he's just trying to find an excuse. He's like, nah, 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 nah. This, 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 it's a bug, bro. It's a bug. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Supervision was difficult, but because I was able to realize com uh, combinations and conversations that were not in the original, I was able to improve the resolution of the characters. Also, it seems like the voice actors were able to resonate with the lines and scenes in the game. There was there are so many voice actors who like the orig game's original story and the fifth anniversary event. Uh, Knights of Fiana, obviously Mutsumi Tamura, who played Dim slash Finn, really empathized with me. I was really happy as the original author. Danmimo has been amazing since six years ago with full voice. I think that's why the voice actors played such a big role. Absolutely. I think voice actors being present in the game. I mean, for heaven's sakes, Matsuoka has a Guinness World Record for Bell's voice lines in Danmimo. He's got the most voice lines in any game, apparently. And I think it's grown since then because he got that award during the second anniversary of Dan Mimo. We're in the sixth anniversary. And of course, we, we have this last story to go which is obviously going to have more bell voice lines as well so i mean it's just like come on he's gonna be getting to a pinnacle basically it's gonna be insane to see if he they update it and show us how many voice lines matsuoka matsuoka actually has in the game after the sixth anniversary because we did see how many voice lines he had during the anniversary live stream i think it was like around 15,000 or 16,000 or something like that. It's going to go up higher a little bit after the 6th anniversary. All right, Nagano goes on to talk about the voice actors here. We did a great job with the full voice. Nowadays, smartphones are becoming more and more popular. But at that time, I think there were no, almost no other games with full voice. Yeah, I think even Fate Grand Order actually didn't have full voices. Like, it had voice acting as well. But it wasn't fully voiced like uh, Don Mimo. I think Don Mimo was one of the rare games... Um, to have full voice acting at the time. Obviously, nowadays you have games like Genshin, Honkai Star Rail, and so on and so forth that are voiced, but back then, not so much, right? Uh, Amori Sensei says here, the reason why I was so nervous about supervising was because the cast breathed, li breathed, breathed life into it. Breath. Breath is not a word, Gail. Come on now. Breathe life into it. If it, even if it, if it, if it is just the text, even if it's a little bit out of place, it's possible to convey it. But if the voice is added to it, it's easy to feel that the character is lying, even if it's slightly out of place. True. I think, you know, you can discern between the voice acting, especially depending on the tone, the way it's being portrayed and everything. So that's very important. Um, that's why we worked with Warner Brothers Japan, who are involved in the animation of Danmachi, and have put a lot of effort into the casting and voice acting. Fair enough. I wasn't expecting that to be the case actually i didn't know that they liaised with i mean it makes sense now that they had to liaise with warner brothers japan to get the japanese voice actors to come in and work on it right but yeah it's it's crazy in fact there were times when the characters appeared in the game before they did in the anime so the voice actors were often decided in dan mimo shakti leader of the ganesha familia is one of them i mean shakti alize as you know the australia familia as a whole right you obviously have um I'm trying to think who else was there that we could probably point out, maybe. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else that we could probably point out um, that came into the uh, game before they came into the anime. I think Alan, yeah, I guess Alan and Alfred, potentially. I don't remember, but I think Alan and Alfred probably got voiced first in Don Mimo before they did in the anime i'm pretty sure so yeah i mean it's it's insane the, the, this is a very true uh, fair point to make and a very uh, cool thing that they did uh, obviously ah sword oratoria 12 of course um recently freya's freya familiar's hayden and hegney okay Fre hayden and hegney count okay in the future if the anime continues beyond the fourth season the characters that will naturally appear will appear while listening to the opinions of various people I wasn't concerned about how much it would be drawn in the anime, but from the perspective of the committee, it's important. So yeah, this is where the production committee comes into play. SB Creative, Warner Brothers Japan, they kind of have to come in and together and be like, okay, this is what you can do. This is what we can't do. This is the voice actor we are going to hire for this character. Do you, do you think it's fine and stuff like that? So yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is what uh, Omoi Sensei says. 
There were times where I casually said things like this voice actor might be close to my image out of personal taste and preferences without worrying about anything else. So there are times where I felt sorry for that because obviously if, if he's like, OK, we want this voice actor and obviously it costs a lot to get that voice actor. It's a big mess that, you know, the production committee has to get around to doing or being like, listen, Amori Sensei, my guy, I we need to probably change the voice actor. Do you have any other recommendations? Right. Um, so that's something to take note of as well. In terms of making the most of the charm of the characters, we put a lot of effort into the interaction screen so that those who have seen the anime will also be satisfied. Our animators are excellent and I think we were able to create a, a content that conveys the appeal of the characters. Another point of the interaction screen is that the dialogue changes depending on where you touch it. Uh, obviously this is unfortunately something we don't have on the uh, uh, NA version. Well I think we can actually still tap it and we get a voice line but Obviously, we don't get the jiggle physics, of course, right? Because of Crunchyroll. Thanks, Crunchyroll, by the way. Um, the basic elements of the game prototypes are fields, battles, and gacha. Um, Omori Sensei goes on here. I really struggled with supervising the dialogue on the exchange screen. Things like, I'm going to go so far as to change my likes, lines depending on how much I like you. I had to think about how to react in a situation even the original author had never thought about that. So it was stimulating, but I also struggled in various ways. Um, Nagano says, I thought that Lafia's reaction was amazing. Most of the characters soften their lines towards Belle, but as their likability increases. But Lafia is the only one who says Belle is silly all the time. Amori Sensei was the only one who was able to adjust this area. And as the original work progressed, I became more convinced of the parts that I didn't understand because they weren't drawn in the original work six years ago. I was really grateful that you looked ahead and supervised it. I also intended to soften Lafia somewhat, considering the fact that it is game medium. I was also concerned about how to adjust the temperature of the line, basically. Fair enough. I mean, that's... Fair enough. I mean, that's a very interesting thing. Amori Sensei had to think well in advance and see where the story would have gone. Obviously, I do think that a lot of the stuff that is in Dan Nemo from six years ago doesn't really completely apply to the original work that's been going on right now in the light novels with like say for example volume 16 to 18 and so on and so forth because things change right ideas change plans change a little bit but i do feel like for the most part i feel like the route must have been still the same it must but you might take a slight detour here and there basically right is the main thing i feel like amori sensei probably would have done in this situation all right, let's go on to the game system. Wow, part one has a lot of information. This is a lot to go through. Okay, let's let's break this down because now we're getting to the battle system. This is very interesting because I think a lot of people have mixed opinions about the battle system in Don Nemo, right? So let's talk about this. A six year history looking back on the game system side, what part did you focus on in the battle system? Remember, this is only part one of the interview, by the way. I think Don Nemo has a high degree of perfection as an RPG. I think that's a little bit of a stretch, but we'll move along. I think it, I think at, at its core, it's a good RPG because it's got, you know, the usual things where it's like skills, special arts, so on and so forth, right? But of course, when it comes to abilities and stuff like that, it, they haven't, you know, gone out of the box. Originally, they had some interesting things like reflect and stuff like that, which we don't see in characters anymore because back then they were OP to a degree. If you put it in characters of the modern era, you could argue that they would be way too OP as well, potentially, right? So I see why they might have abandoned some of them and, you know, introduced other things as well, like additional actions, barrier and stuff like that. Okay, anyways, let's uh, let's let's re uh, read what Nozawa has to say here. In the early stages of development, we were conscious of how we could express the characters in battle and how many of them would appear. It is easy. It is not easy to understand. Uh, one second, I want to, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that I can read this a little bit better. Um, it is not easy to understand the character expression in the conversation scene. You could say it's an adventure part, but because I can make the head and body pictures the same as the anime, I can see a kind of correct answer that I can express the characters and images that are expressed in the anime without breaking them. Battle screens, on the other hand, often require some kind of design change. In the case of Don Mimo, I made it as an RPG-like side view chibi character battle. So the head character's head and body image change. So of course, yeah, this is them referring to the fact that they had to go chibi design basically for the battle design. Um, in addition to the inevitable deformation, we have to finish the design so that anyone can see it as bell and eyes. Also, not only the appearance, but also the movement and production when attacking must be something that been, can be convinced that it is properly Danmachi. We've been accumulating know-how over the past six years, so recently we've been working towards improving the quality of cut-ins and chibi character actions, but the early days were tough. 
Idol costumes are noticeable, but I feel like the production of special moves has evolved tremendously. What do you think about the battle system? Nozawa says, I thought about the various elements th so that you could feel the worldview of Danmachi while playing. For example, I wanted to recreate the concept of vanguard and rearguard and the divisions of roles within a party uh, during an adventure. So I incorporated it into a battle system. I mean, yeah, you can see that with the front, the, the, the vanguard being the front, front four units. The rear guard being the two units and then of course you've got your roles your support units your uh, physical units your magic units um i wonder if they'll talk about defense and healer type units because of course those are two types of units that we got a lot of in the first year first two years even and then after that we've gotten nothing we've not gotten a single defensive unit nor a healer type unit they've just converted all of those physical and defensive units into balanced physical or magic type units so yeah However, we made adjustments so to make it easier to play so that people who fell in love with the work from the anime wouldn't feel too maniac when they played it. So while we had the concept of vanguard and rearguard, we made it an easy to understand where the vanguard would come down and then the rearguard would come out, basically. So if the vanguard goes down, rearguard comes up, basically. Also, the gods who control the familiar are also very attractive, but they are also not supposed to actively fight in the lower world. So that's why they brought them into the form of a Sith, basically, to give adventurous protection. Although I, they didn't fight directly, I think I was able to express the character's charm by generating voices and production. So yeah, if you take a look at how characters are, they are the one. The assists are usually the ones uh, setting up the voices, basically, at the start and the end of fights, and then of course in the KO screen, basically, at the end. It's always the assist that pops up, basically. So it makes sense in that regards. In addition to battles, we've incorporated blacksmith uh, smithing systems, incorporated battles between guilds that recreate conflicts between familiars, and turn monster failure into events. Yeah, but the monster failure hasn't gotten an update in like four years, buddy. Please, where is it at, though? Where is it at? <laughs> We designed the game so that players could feel the joy of living as an adventure in the city of Orario, including the ability to walk around the city and talk to the characters. Mr. Amori, a heavy user of Dan Mimo, how did you get involved with the game outside of the story? Have you been involved in the game development other than the story? I'm a heavy Dan Mimo player, so from around the third anniversary, I started getting involved in various aspects of the game. Oh! Also, uh, Omori Sensei has had an active develop, uh, active game developing role basically. So I assume he must have suggested it from a player's perspective of doing this and doing that. Brother in Christ, why didn't you listen to any of the players then and adding some more stuff, bro? Come on now. But at the time of its release, he was focusing on the scenario. So basically from the start of the game to the third anniversary, he was just working on the story. And then from the third anniversary onwards, he helped develop some games basically uh, in terms of like um, suggesting certain things and stuff like that. Rather than meddling, he listened to me very kindly and often gave me opinions on how to make things better. From around the third anniversary, the number of quests within a storyline increased, so I sometimes received ideas from Mr. Amori. Hearing you, uh, your story, I get the impression that Mr. Amori is d deeply involved in the game development in various places. It's rare that the original author is involved this far. I'm really grateful, but maybe that's why I'm relying too much on Mr. Amori. Amori Sensei has a very high production ability, and he brings us ideas and texts that have been incorporated into the game from proposal stage. That's a, it's very interesting that Amori Sensei has had an active role in game development, to be honest. I wasn't expecting this, to be honest. I I mean, it makes sense, but at the same time, like they've said, right, it's, it's very rare to see an author of a franchise be involved with the game development. Again, it goes back to what I said earlier on. I don't think Amori Sensei is going to have this level of connection and chemistry with the Danmachi Battle Chronicle devs or the upcoming other Danmachi game. Honestly, I don't think so. Because it just feels like there's just way too many connections and the chemistry is like max level when it comes to these character uh, these uh characters these people honestly the developers the the director producer omori sensei himself everybody's very much connected to one another and they are doing this for the passion of the story more so than anything else um when working with people outside the company it's not uncommon for them to say unreasonable things like huh are you going to express that in the game how rather when i bring in the project plan the teacher thinks together about how it should be presented in the game Amori Sensei goes on to talk about he, how he started playing games and wondered if he could uh, think from the point of view bo as both the creator and the player. I feel like Don Mimo has trained me to find that balance. Um, Nakano says, you can submit your work to Amori Sensei once a week and if you submit it, you will receive it back in the same week. There are a lot of remote things these days, but when you think about it, there are a lot of them. 
That's why we can share our products right away. We get quick responses and live feedback. So development has progressed very smoothly. Is it okay to count Mr. Mori as one of the direction directors? No, Mori said it's an, no, 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 it's an exaggeration. No, I think genuinely though, you could make an argument and say that Amori Sensei is like a assistant director, effectively, right? As a Caesar, he's an executive director, I suppose. If anything, he's like the guy who will be like, okay. Or a quality tester, you could argue, maybe, right? Like a quality tester, but a really good quality tester because he's linked with Danmachi as a IP, right? So, you can make that argument. That's very interesting. Uh, Nakano says, when we're writing the scenario, he sometimes thinks about the production effects and he often gives us uh, accurate opinions about the game improvements. By the way, I use the advice my teacher gave me and when I proposed a project, I sometimes added a word, this is because Amori Sensei said so. That's power harassment. I was always worried about the man hours when I consulted. I think the games and novels are quite different in their own way, but I'm surprised at how flexible they are. Yeah, I think that's something that I'm going to be doing in an upcoming video, actually. I'm actually collaborating everything I know about Danmachi's timeline, and I'm going to be making a video on, like, exactly the chronological order and everything. But it is very flexible. Like, you could just, obviously, read the game itself. And while it has its own unique features and stories, Obviously, you can use it as a little bit of a substitute to the light novels, of course, right? However, I would always say that the light novel is probably a little bit better because it's obviously Amori's original work. Whereas Danmimo is obviously an adaptation. It's obviously going to cut some corners in order to have a visual and voiced adaptation, right? So yeah, that's something to note as well. Amori Sensei said, uh, says here, putting aside whether or not I'm flexible, if my work is made into a game and there are original authors or light novel writers who are in charge of supervision, I want to tell them with a triumphant look that even I, I, I mean, you'd better play the game. As well as knowing what can be done and can't be done, the resolution is also increased, making it easier to repeat trial and error. If if you overdo it, it will be difficult, so of course you need to save. Um, Nagano says, Mr. Amori is a wonderful person who writes novels, is in charge of manga originals, and can also write game scenarios. The text you all received already contains instructions for the background and BGM, and I can only say that it's amazing. In a sense, it goes as far as specifying the script. He, so um, Amori Sensei says, there have been some player, uh, failures, but I think that's why we were able to deliver a story that everyone can enjoy at anniversary events. Looking back at it now, the first anniversary event, Grand Day, was kind of naive, but there were also good things. Interesting. At the time, I was worried that the scenario would be okay with such a large volume, but now it's at the anniversary event with the least volume. That is true, actually. You know, in retrospect, of course, Grand Day was such a massive event. We obviously had Grand Day Eve as well to kind of count towards Grand Day, right? Um, but if you think about it, it was the least amount of content we've had during an anniversary because, of course, in uh, the Argonaut story, we had two parts and then Australia Record onwards, third anniversary onwards. It's always been three parts at the very least. So, yeah, I mean, it's insane. Um, rather, I'm surprised that so many stories are often contained in that amount of text. We want to create an environment where Mr. Mori can create comfortably. It doesn't mean that we are in a good mood, but rather that we put all our effort into it. And if we propose at it at the supervision meeting, it will get on board and get excited. I've always worked hard as a team uh, without forgetting to be serious. I'm sure there aren't that many sites that pour so much love into the original IP. It makes me really happy when they exceed my expectations. Without that, Ar Argonaut and Australia record, which depicts the past of Ryu and the Australia Familia, uh, would not have been born, and there would have been no reimportation to the original. Yeah, I mean, obviously, Argonaut and Australia record both are Danmimo originals that are now being put into light novel format. It's crazy the influence Danmimo has had, even in the mainline story light novels and stuff, right? It's insane. So. That's, it's true, it's true. Um, there were times when I thought I was putting too much important content in the, into the game that could have been written into the novel, but I've put all my effort into the game without being stingy. There are many characters like Tavi who were born because of the games, and I think that the six years of Dan Mimo have helped me and Dan Machi grow a lot. Continuing the interview in part two, wow. A lot of it was about the storytelling experience in this uh, interview, which obviously makes sense because I've always said this, Dan Machi and Dan Mimo have always been focused on storytelling, right? That, that's been the uh, main feature of Dan Mimo. But we've also got to see a little bit about the battle systems and everything. What I'm expecting to see in the next interview is more so about the future of Dan Mimo and the current present of Dan Mimo. This is, of course, all about the past and stuff. But it was nice seeing how involved Amori Sensei was with the development of the game. I am very surprised that he was this actively involved with the game in terms of not just supervising the story, but also suggesting things about how the game should be run. You know, certain gameplay elements, certain 
um, game modes even. So it's very interesting to see this much thought being put into the game. And it kind of doubles down on what I said. This is a passion project at this point. I feel like you could make an argument and say since the fourth anniversary with the uh, revenue of the game going down year on year and along with that also just the player base going down year on year, um, you could make an argument and said they could have shut down the game about a year ago once you know the fifth anniversary is done. They released some insane units for the fifth anniversary. They could have called it quits right there and said goodbye, right? But the fact that they're going up until now and they're still planning on continuing after the 6th anniversary, admittingly with no new story content, but at least new units and also, you know, ranking events coming back and forth, you know, continuously rerunning anniversary events. It goes to show that this is still a passion project at the end of the day. And they'll try and run it as long as possible. Of course, I do believe that'll be the next fiscal year. Um, at the start of the next fiscal year, we'll probably see the announcement of the game ending service. But at the same time, there is a dedication still attached to the game. And there is this enthusiasm that they're talking about here from Amori Sensei and the development team. Um, of course, I'm very curious to see what you guys have to say down below in the comments regarding this interview process. Um, did you guys like it, dislike it? I mean, it's a very, very long interview. Like I said, I'll be leaving a link to it in the description down below so you guys can read it yourselves. Um, but let me know what you guys think. I really like this interview. I'm very much looking forward to part two of the interview, which I think is going to be super in detail about, like, I think the current and the future of Don Mimo. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it i'm very much looking forward to it but yeah let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and i will see you guys in the next video until then take it easy everybody Bye bye